When we want to use Arduino or compatible WASP for real applications, using batteries can lead us to applications that will depend on the battery duration. This is a rare problem, as we may need to overdimension the batteries to use our Arduino for a long time period, or maintain always Arduino plugged to a power source. However, the truth is that in many of our applications, for instance measuring data from sensors like in data logging applications or to control the performance of a system, such as irrigation control, we just need to take measurements with Arduino between time periods or cycles. That is to say, we only need to switch on the board when those measurements or verification algorithms need to be executed. But how can we control the switch on and off cycles using Arduino? Do we need to have continuously connected our device to a power source? The answer is no. In this video, we will see how I usually achieve this in my projects, for instance, in environmental monitoring applications like IoT sensors in field or other systems that I have installed in my house, like the Garden Irrigation System Controller, reducing up to a minimum the power consumption. Today, we will learn how to automatically turn on and off an Arduino to achieve a long-time performance with the minimum battery capacity. Let's go auto power in Arduino! This is a Polo Loop 2808, a push button power switch for power control. It is a solid state power switch that features a built in reverse voltage protection and it's controlled by a momentary push button. Additionally, thanks to the viable pins, we can use external hardware to control its turning off and on, and therefore, we can use it for automatically switching on and off an Arduino board by combining it with a real time clock, such as the DS3231, a commonly used alternative in Arduino projects. Considering this, for this application we will need an Arduino board, or another Arduino compatible board. In my case, I'm going to use a Federal Logger. I like this board because it can be directly powered by a LiPo battery and has an integrated SD card holder that makes it very interesting for data logging applications. Additionally, we will need an RTC board based in the DS3231 chip. We can use many alternative RTC boards, but some will require modifications. And of course, we will need a battery. We will start with hardware connections. The 3.7 volts battery will power directly the Polo Loop 2808 switch, which can handle an operation voltage from 2.2 volts to 16 volts and a maximum current of 12 amps, more than enough for all Arduino applications. In the same way, despite the RTC boards to came with their own battery, we can also power up from the main battery of our projects, as it requires from 2.3 to 5.5 volts for operation, consuming around 0.3 milliamps. The switch on of our circuit will be controlled by the RTC using programmed alarms that will be outdated every switching on cycle. When the alarm is activated, it will generate an interrupt signal in the SQW pin of our RTC that will be used to simulate a power on signal in the Pololo switch. The microcontroller will be powered up from the Pololo switch. It will communicate with the RTC via I2C connections, where we don't need to forget pull-up resistors depending on the RTC module that we use. And in the same way, the microcontroller will control directly the power off of the Pololo switch by means of a digital pin connected to the OFF pin of the switch. With this setup, the alarm of the RTC will switch on the circuit, activating the microcontroller, and after the microcontroller will switch off the alarm of the RTC, it will execute the loop code, that is to say our instructions, it will update the alarm, and finally it will switch off the circuit. And voila! Now we can complete the switch of the circuit when it's not needed, avoiding the necessary consumptions. When off, the circuits will only consume 0.3 mA from the RTC, and the consumption from the power switch will be negligible. Let's now solder the circuit and program the script.
In this application, we use a RTC module from Adafruit that only contains pull-up resistors for the I2C connection and a capacitor in the power line, as recommended in the dataset of the RTC chip. However, we can find in the market other alternatives that could work after a slight modification. For instance, this is a common alternative that can be easily found on Amazon or similar marketplaces. However, in order to use the SQW pin as an interrupt signal as explained, we will need to rewire it a little, as the SQW pin is connected to a pull-down resistor that always maintains the signal high. We can modify it in different ways. For instance, cutting the third pin of the RTC module and directly using it as a SQW signal, don't forget to also cut the path connecting to the output pin, or maybe even easier, cut the trace to the resistor. Alternatively, you can always use directly the RTC chip attaching pull-up resistors in the E2C pins. Let's go coding. Here is the auto power code developed for the circuit. The code, together with the required library, can be downloaded from the link on the video description. The code is quite simple and only uses one external library, a modified version of the DS3231 Max from Win Holders Google site. I use massively this library for managing the DS3231 chip. After solving some errors from the original, it is robust and reliable. After including the library, we define the digital pin for controlling the off signal, the pin 12. A variable that defines the switching off time of the microcontroller in seconds, 10 seconds as an example, but usually will be higher, a byte array to store the date time of the RTC module, and the RTC variable. In the setup, we just define the off pin as an output. We initiate the RTC and we clear all the alarms of the RTC. In the loop, first we define our code. In this case, just a delay of 2 seconds. But here we can, for example, read data from some sensors and storage in a SD card, a typical case on environmental monitoring. Or, for example, include some control applications that consider sensor data, like in a garden irrigation system application. Once we execute our code, we set a new alarm by getting first the current date time. Adding to this value the number of seconds defined in the beginning, 10 seconds, we allow this new alarm to the RTC, and after we activate the alarm. This RTC chip has two alarms, alarm 1 and alarm 2. Different alarm times that can be defined are described in the library. Personally, I always use the one defined here. Next, we set the off pin to height to switch off the circuit. With all this, the circuit recursively will switch off every 10 seconds, round the code and switch off again. And finally, let's upload the code to see its real performance. As you see, the circuit and code works perfectly. Now, with a single battery and depending on the sleeping time defined, we can get the maximum of the battery. In my applications, mainly data logging, I surpass it more than one year with a single battery. Subscribe if you like the video and I see you in the next one.